welcome back to the House of Cards. I hope everyone had a great weekend. You are joining us for episode number 84 and for another Mailbag Monday. Yes, very exciting mailbag. Got some awesome cards in this one. Can't wait to share them with you. Before we jump into that, if you haven't yet subscribed, now is the time. Hit the subscribe button. Super easy. It's free, painless, and you will get awesome videos like this sent to you up to two times a week. And if you do like the video at the end, I would love it for you to hit the like button because that tells other people that this video is cool and you enjoyed it. So more people will hopefully see it. All right. Well, I'm not going to dilly dally too long today, so we will jump right into it. Enjoy the mailbag and I'll see you on the other side. All right. Let's start with this box. An interesting choice. Right, I'm assuming it's a card, not wax or anything but hmm couldn't tell you find out in a second mm. or not all right i'm just gonna gorilla style this thing here we go good old weekly newspaper ads and a big old bubble wrap Packaged, definitely safe. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can see what the card is now through the plastic, and I understand why it was sent in such a safe manner. Very cool. So it's kind of hard to see inside of this top loader. Oh, they're like multiple top layers connected together. I see. There we go. <laughs> so this is um, a 2000 Fleer Metal Tom Brady. So a Tom Brady rookie card. Um, it's definitely a hard, hard grade just because, you know, Fleer Metal in general is, you know, it's a full foil card on the front or whatever material that is. It's like a weird, like, textury, foily sort of thing. So, again, it chips really easy and, you know, just has a lot of, like, real sensitivity for condition. But the card itself is really cool. I like it be for a couple reasons. Um, a, there's only a few cards from the 2000 year um brady's true rookie season that actually have him in a patriots uniform um one of them being the bowman which is probably the most famous card um other than that gosh I'm just trying to think of the time ahead i think the upper deck one might have him in a uniform but a lot of the kind of lower end ones like the pacifics and the score and the, just the kind of those you know run of the mill ones all have him either in a michigan uh uniform or um like a weird practice jersey or something anyways there's not too many that you see him in his full patriots uniform so i like that a lot i think that was really you know one of the reasons why i got, got this i was really attracted to that um but other than that you know it's just a cool card in general um horizontal so not too many horizontal cards of his there's a couple like pacific ones i think but um yeah just a really nice looking card off the you know look at condition and stuff i'm not expecting this to get a 10 or anything um you know i'd be happy with an eight or something along those lines so hopefully it holds up um the back looks pretty good don't see any chipping you know this is like a couple little soft corners but you know that's to be expected there's not gonna be a you know you're not gonna see like a pristine version of this pop of you know most likely ever unless you know someone's like selling their collection or something but um yeah anyways i'll take a look here and we'll see how it does hopefully it's um in good shape and i can get this graded all right moving on something international so i'm gonna do this off camera because address is galore all over it all right cool so this is obviously <laughs> attack prescott this is an optic orange, so this is a numbered uh, version of it. So this is number to 199. So I did get a Baker orange uh, recently, not the same year, obviously two years later, but um, they both are like you know slightly off center, as you can see here. I mean, it's not like terrible. I would say it's yeah, probably like 60 40, but it's um, you know it's a nice card, it's a nice DAC rookie. I think it's you know. 
it's got a lot of uh, upside with the season about to start. So I wanted to grab a few DAX just to kind of, you know, keep my uh, stack up. I got this 10 here that I did in a in a trade in this nice silver 10. This one's already creeping up in value. So um, yeah, I mean, if Dak starts off hot and he, you know, he pumps out a few good games and, you know, Cowboys are looking strong, you know, like I can see that card jumping a lot really quick. So I think with football, you just gotta be kind of ready to move because, you know, any given Sunday sort of mentality of, you know, this could be that week where they just go nuts and he throws for five touchdowns and blah, 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 you know. And then the next week he could get hurt. So, you know, it's like just, it's one of those risks. You know, football, I think, is probably one of the more riskier sports to um, invest in. But it's also a really fun sport because it has such a huge fan base. You know, U.S., of course, but just a huge fan base and, you know, a ton of attention goes to football. It kind of overshadows everything else while it's going on, even though, you know, you know basketball will be starting, um, you know, towards middle of the football season. And then baseball will be winding down. Football will still get the most attention until it's done. So it's a great, uh, it's a great kind of platform to kind of like day trade on and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's scary to hold full time unless you're, you know, really trying to, you know, uh, assume someone's gonna be the next Tom Brady or something. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, cool. So I picked this up recently just because I wanted to have a graded copy of this already ready to go. Um, this is uh, Julio Rodriguez, who's um, an up-and-coming prospect for the Mariners. Definitely probably going to get called up next year, I would assume. So I think um, I'm kind of just kind of stocking up on his stuff now. He's already pretty expensive. It's not like he's cheap. But for some reason, this one went for a really low price. It went for like 60 something dollars, I believe, which is like, I mean, the raw copies of this are going like 30 to 40 bucks ballpark. So to me, a nine for like 60 is a pretty good deal. I can see right now why the top to bottom is pretty bad centering, but you know, it's still nine. You know, a lot of people just buy things on the grade, not the actual card. So it might be one of those scenarios where I'll uh, resell this on, you know, as it being a nine, but probably something I'll hold on to until the, you know, until he gets called up and, and the real hype starts for him. So, but just want to have one slab. I do have a few raw copies of this one in the Mojo, um, but, I figured, you know, having a slab copy is always nice because you can, you know, move it really fast and easy and versus raw sometimes gets a little tricky. So anyways, nice Julio Rodriguez, PSA 9, uh, Bowman Chrome Mojo. There you go. Okay. Oh, got one here from Mr. Rick Probstein. <laughs> I think this is a graded card. Feels like it is thick. In my case putting a little uh, propaganda in the mail now. Hmm. Never used a consigner before. Maybe, I don't know. I'll look into it. I hear good and bad things. I think when it's graded cards, there's no issues, but just when the raw cards, man, those are the, <laughs> those are the sketchy plays. All right. Awesome. Glad to have this right before the season. Um, so this is a 2012 Topps Chrome. So this is from the main Topps Chrome set. Um, this is an insert for the Red Zone rookies. So this is the base. There's a bunch of different kind of variations to this or some numbered ones and stuff, but this is just the base. Um, I like this one because even though it wasn't a uh, true gem, but the only uh, nine score was for edges which again on any die cut card that's always going to be sort of your problem area but the like the fact that everything else is nine five so um you know if if you had to pick edges is probably be the one that you would want to be lower uh, obviously you want them all to be nine fives or higher but um in the world of you got to pick one i think the edges is the one that most people really don't care that much about so yeah nice cool basic russell here um yeah, just a nice car. Got it for a really good price, so pretty happy about this. I have this in my Russell PC. All right. Okay. Well, they wrote on the <laughs> they wrote on the tape here. Dak Prism. Oh, Dak Pink. Sorry. So I know what this is. This is the optic um, pink hollow for Dak. There we 
go. That's a beautiful card. Yeah, I like the pink. Um, I think it goes well with the blue. Yeah, I think they kind of complement each other. It's kind of that Christian McCaffrey I have that's um, the pink hollow. And it just kind of looks good even with the blue because it's just it's complementary color. So, yeah, this one looks pretty clean, pretty mint. So, yeah, happy to have this. I did get the orange one the other day. Uh, so, that friends here. But the centering on this pink one looks a lot better than the orange centering. So, I think... I mean, even though the orange is numbered, so it's a little bit more of a high value card, but I think this one is a really clean copy. So that uh, could be a potential grading candidate. We'll see. But yeah, nice Dak here to start the season. Definitely uh, stocking up on him. Gosh, some of the other quarterbacks are already so expensive. I like, um, I, love, I love to get more Baker. I did grab that orange Baker but I would love to get another like higher end card of him, but yeah, and his prices are extremely high. I mean, there's so much hype baked, baked into the Browns this year. I mean, you can just imagine how most people are projecting them to go far, so. All right, now let's see here. Okay, so just a nice another uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, this is from my always talked about and purchased 2017 Topps Chrome uh, soccer set. So just another uh, De Bruyne refractor there. Nothing too crazy. I just saw the other day that he's actually um, in the running. I think he's in the top five running for the player of the year for the UEFA. So, I mean, he's a great player. I think, again, just one of those guys that the hobby kind of sleeps on a little bit. But if you're into soccer, I would definitely say get into some uh, De Bruyne cards. Again, his rookies don't um, this is not his rookie card by any shot, but it's um, it's his first Topps Chrome card. But his rookie start, I think he was 2011, I want to say, this is his rookie season. So really all you can find back then is stickers. So uh, they're already pretty expensive, um, some of the you know the main ones from, from that year. But you can find some other ones around that time frame that aren't too aren't going to break the bank. So, you know, if you like De Bruyne, I'd say start looking into some of his early stickers. But um, his newer stuff's also still very affordable just because he's you know, again, kind of a sleeper in the soccer world, but there you go. All right, let's, this one here, Feel, feeling kind of slabby. Horrible, horrible folding job on this. Hey. <laughs> My OCD wouldn't allow for that. In here. Okay. I know. It's like a giant piece of cardboard in here that's so darn tight I can't even get past it. There we go. We'll just do that. See that? See how big the piece of cardboard is? Alright, cool. That's not good. There's a crack in this lab. Um, this is a John Morant. Optic 2019, the hyper pink one. So it looked like a nice copy. Maybe slightly OC top bottom, but overall pretty nice copy. I think the pink works good with the Grizzlies whole vibe. I know they, they incorporate pink into their uniforms and their like shoes and stuff a lot, but you see that? That's something that, you know, if it wasn't there before and it got cracked in shipping, then that's one thing, but um, if it was there before, they should have disclosed that in the listing because that does detract from the value. It sounds silly because it's not, you know, the card, but you know, people put a lot of value into the slab. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out to the seller and just see if he knew about that ahead of time or if it happened during. I don't see how it could have happened during shipping with that giant piece of freaking cardboard in there. <laughs> so, anyways, pretty nice job around there, uh, mint nine on that. So, of course, save a lot of money on the nine. Versus the 10. And this one is from Hong Kong. Probably soccer. <laughs> Usually is. Oh boy. Did they use a. Did they use a Vlad rookie card as a. <laughs> as a filler? <laughs> Huh, interesting. I mean, that's a nice filler. Well, here's the card I ordered, which is great. 
which is uh, Erlen Holland. This is the top's finest um, car. But just real quick, before we get into that, I mean, look at it's like a Vlad insert, but it's a rookie card. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if it has any value or not, but I mean, it's still a Vlad. And then whatever these things are. Anyways, um, hmm. so anyways, uh, back to the Holland. Um, so this is just the base card, but this is from the 2019-20 uh, uh, Topps Finest set. And the reason why this card is uh, important is because this is him in his um, FC Salzburg kit, which is the actual, his first um his uh, first club, you know, that he, you know, first major club that he played on. So a lot of people, you know, are used to seeing him in the Dortmund kit, but this is actually precedes his Dortmund um, days. So this, a lot of people consider this is like true rookie um, versus his, you know, tops Chrome and stuff that have him in his Dortmund kit. So anyways, um, there's a little soccer knowledge for you. Anyways, so yeah, this looks pretty clean. I think it's a looks like a pretty nice copy. So I've, I've wanted to get one of these for a while and you know, definitely gonna get it graded eventually. I'm not sure if it's worth, you know, two, $300 grading right now, but it's still a great card. And you know, in, in, in a 10, it's a very valuable card, but you know, you, you don't ever wanna assume you're gonna get a 10. You always assume you're gonna get a nine and then do your calculations on grading if it's worth it or not <laughs> based on a nine, not a 10. If you get a 10, it's just bonus. All right, well, I know what this one is, but it's in here pretty crazy here. A little crossbar uh, <laughs> painter's tape action. So I wanted to get some more tattoos. I've sold through all of my tattoos. So I have one uh, auto, but I don't have any of his um, his regular cards. So I, uh, I like the pink for him for some reason. I think it kind of matches him as a his like kind of swagger <laughs> i think the pink hall the pink uh refractor makes sense with him for some reason so saw this one it looked good it uh, looks good in hand of course surface is always the big question mark on these cards so i'll uh, dig into this one further but for now it looks pretty nice and yeah this one you know again like the holland it'd probably be something i want to slab but i don't know if it's a 200 dollars you know worthy slab at this point but you know, you gotta make that decision personally if you wanna go for it or if you just wanna keep it raw or you know, go SGC too and get a, you know, a, a slab that may not have as much value but still a nice, uh, you know, nice to get it into a slab. So, anyways. All right. Well, what a great mailbag. I picked definitely some cards that I've been hunting for for a while. So, I'm happy to have those in my collection. If you enjoyed the video, please take the time to hit the like button. That means a lot to me and it helps the video get out to more people. And if you still haven't subscribed yet, you got one more chance before this video is over, hit the subscribe button and you will be all set. All right guys, well that is it for today. Thanks again for tuning in and enjoying another Monday mailbag and we will see you on the next video. Peace.